what I want to do is to start a new series of lectures. And this is more historical stuff, um, but uh, this might be a little more uh, comprehensible of what we're doing because this feeds in directly to the Communist Manifesto. So what I'm doing in this series of videos is, is trying to um, substantiate some of the general claims that Marx and Engels make in the Communist Manifesto and to, to situate the Communist Manifesto in historical time. So they wrote it in 1848. And so this whole series of lectures uh, will take off from where I left off with the, uh, the, the English Revolution and then continue from that point through to uh, the English bourgeois, you know, I'm talking about bourgeois, there's a later phase of capitalist uh, revolution uh, through to the later stages of the bourgeois revolution uh, leading right up to uh, the time when Marx and Engels were writing the Communist Manifesto. Okay, and um, so let's let's take a look at it, uh, and I'll just do a little bit of an overview of what's uh, going on here. So I want to just uh, do a, a couple of preliminary. Um, remarks about scientific revolution. I wanna do a, a, a brief summary of what I did for the English uh, revolution, that earlier part, and then uh, talk about later developments in parliamentary monar monarchy. So remember that with the English revolution, we left off with parliamentary monarchy and that's continuing on and continuing to evolve over the time period that I'm going to discuss, uh, but the main, you know, foothold was made with the Act of Sett Settlement in 1701. And then um, uh, I want to focus this history by focusing on uh, textile technology. So we're going to be talking about um, the bourgeois industrial revolution, but that's the industrial revolution. And in many respects, the Industrial Revolution was very much focused, uh, especially in England, on the textile industry. And so I'm gonna use that as the, the key example of industrialization. And, and, uh, and you'll see that there's good reason for that. I mean, it plays a very prominent role in English history of the Industrial Revolution. And, um, and, then, and then the example of the Industrial Revolution um, is also a key, uh, the, the example of the textile industry is a key example that Marx uses, especially in Capital Volume One, a lot of his documentation of the, the exploitation of labor comes from the cotton mills, from the textile industry. And, uh, and, and the reason, part of the reason is, and we'll see this in this historical survey, is that um, eventually parliament becomes very concerned with what's going on in these factories. Okay. And, and there's just a lot of interesting connections here. Okay, so, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a, a, the next video, I'll do a, an overview of the scientific revolution, the, the English revolution and parliamentary monarchy. Then I'll do a section on this primitive and uh, traditional textile technology because I, I want you to understand what textiles are and uh, the way in which this production happened anciently. And, and then you can compare that with um, 
my schematic introduction to Marx's political ecology, uh, you know, looking at these primitive ways of production, you know, reinforces what I said there. And then let's get into the bourgeois revolution and textile technology. And then that uh, leads right into um, socialism, early socialism in England, and uh, especially the, the utopian socialism of Robert Owen, uh, which is mentioned, and he's specifically mentioned in the Communist Manifesto, uh, not merely as just a utopian socialist, but one of the key influences on Marx, uh, who is German, uh, but living in London, and, uh, and Engels, who is British, and, and is also um, a textile capitalist. Okay, so uh, let's, let's take a look at this. And, um, and so I'll just stop this as an overview here, and then I'll, I'll start up in the next video.